So today I'm going to talk about clothing and how it relates to autism. So for someone who's autistic, buying clothes can often be a source of great stress. And so the reason this is, is because of sensory issues. So what that means is different for every autistic person. For me, there are certain fabrics that are very overwhelming, to say the least. And then there are certain fabrics which feel absolutely euphoric. And not only just the type of fabric, but the way that it's made. So when I was a kid, I had to wear a lot of clothes that I really didn't want to wear. When I was uh, about three years old, four years old, my parents put me in ballet. And having the gift of a very good long-term memory means that I can actually vividly remember how painful trying to shove my feet into these tiny little shoes was. Like, even though I was four or five years old, maybe, these shoes were super duper tight and I remember getting blisters from it and everything like that. But, but blisters aside, um, there's a lot of clothing that autistic people would like to wear and can't wear because of sensory issues. So for me, I, I would really love to be able to wear certain dresses or certain pants or shorts. But the, the thing is that these manufacturers connect, connect everything together with seams. And sometimes they add glue onto the seams and then the glue is extremely itchy. And so before I go on a tangent, I want to make it clear to you all what it's like. So it's not just about an itchy tag, or it's not just about something that doesn't feel good. Uh, the level of discomfort that autistic people feel from sensory issues, in particular with clothing, is about akin to someone stepping on a tack. Like if you were walking barefoot and you step on a tack, is it going to kill you? No, it's not going to kill you. If you absolutely had to, could you keep your foot on the tack? Yeah, you probably could, but it would hurt a lot and feel deeply uncomfortable to know that there's a tack in your foot. That's pretty much how it feels uh, as an autistic person trying to wear fabrics that are uncomfortable or too tight or too loose. Um, even very, sometimes even sleeves. On a bad day uh, where I have a lot of symptoms, sleeves is just like really triggering. Which is really unfortunate if you think about it, because the entire professional environment is more or less designed to be a sensory hellscape for autistic people. You're, if you're a lady, you're expected to wear you know, feminine presenting clothing, which means a lot of times the clothing is not comfortable. If you're a guy, then you have to wear, like, I guess, a lot of polos and, and suits and stuff like that. And suits are extremely tight, too, in a lot of places, especially in the shoulders. And so there's a lot of struggles that go into trying to dress oneself appropriately and for the weather as well. This is another thing. A lot of autistic people find great comfort in wearing like oversized uh, long sleeve jackets. But in hot environments, this doesn't work. You can't just wear a jacket all day long when it's 105 outside. You're going to just, it's just not logical or practical. So what this means is that there's a lot of a lot of hope when we buy a new outfit hoping that it's going to be as good as it was when we tried it on. So, so some stores don't even let you try on clothes. You just buy it and then if it doesn't fit you return it. And for someone with severe sensory issues like myself, it's extremely inconvenient to not be able to try on clothing. Um, so I don't even buy it if I can't try it on because I know that there's a high likelihood that there's going to be something that's off about it and then I won't be able to wear it. Like I bought a dress maybe uh, three months ago for like five bucks and I thought I was getting a good deal because it's this really beautiful brown dress but it was from like an antique or re reusable clothing shop. And I got home, and I tried on, and it's too tight in the shoulders. So now, basically, I'll never wear this dress again. It, it's, it's just deeply uncomfortable to wear something when you know and you can feel that something is off. 
Um, to give another example, so one of the fabrics that I absolutely love is nylon. Nylon, every time I wear it or feel it, I just feel extremely happy. It is literally a sense of euphoria. And there are other fabrics like this as well, but it's pretty rare, I would say. Usually there are more painful type fabrics than ones that feel good. Um, but I think that's partially the nature of manufacturing and what it's turned into today. It can be really hard to find clothing that looks cute and also is comfortable and feels good and doesn't have any sensory problems. Sometimes even jean shorts, which is usually my go-to for casual setting, jean shorts can be tight, or even if they're not tight, it kind of pulls on the legs. Wearing jeans overall always bothered me I, like crazy as a kid. I remember even when it got a little bit cold, I would still try to wear shorts because I hated the feeling of the jeans pressing, like skinny jeans, pressing the lower half of my feet together and it was just this really horrible feeling even when jeans fit and feel good sometimes even the perfect pair of jeans still just just triggers me and i think the same applies to um shirts as well so when i was a kid i used to fight with my mom all the time in the winter because she told me i needed to wear a collar neck a collar neck long sleeve shirt and that feeling of something touching my neck like bundled up fabrics it was horrible it was like oh my god imagine that someone said okay now I'm going to pluck out 150 of your hairs out of your scalp that was like the level of discomfort I used to feel from collar necks thankfully as I got older and exposed myself a lot to collar necks out of necessity from living eventually moving to a colder environment where I actually needed to stay warm thankfully I was able to get past it but it's still not 100%. Every time I wear a collar neck, I have to take a deep breath and just basically tell myself, this is going to be uncomfortable. It's okay. I'm acknowledging the discomfort. I'm sitting with this discomfort, and I'm not going to let it control my life. And so this, honestly, this approach is a gift, something that I didn't have for 26 years, because... It used to be that if you have sensory issues, people just call you lazy or whatever else. Like, there's so many words they use to judge other people. There's a lot of embedded ableism in society that most people are completely unaware of. Lazy isn't even the right word. Like, if you show up to a job interview underdressed, then people judge you for it. Um, if you, as a lady... Don't put a ton of time and effort into your appearance. People will judge you for it. Now, in a casual setting with friends, do I care? No, not at all. Around my friends, I just wear whatever the heck I feel like wearing. But every day I go to work, I still have a career, and I still want to succeed in life. And part of that, for being a woman, means that you have to dress in accordance with your job. And this is something that I really struggled with for a long time because trying to find dresses that weren't actually, that were comfortable, didn't have seams, or trying to find shorts or, or, or pants, like professional khaki pants or professional black pants. Um, professional clothing is typically designed to be quite uncomfortable. I have had to go out of my way a lot, a lot just to be able to find something that feels good and something not even necessarily feels good but doesn't make me want to scream, to be honest. Like, trying to figure out what to wear to different events, has, it's never been easy for me. And it's not that I don't want to wear pretty clothes. It's not that I don't want to look good. I think that's what my parents thought for a long time. They thought I just didn't really care about image at all. It wasn't that. I just was really struggling with the sensory issues associated with what most people consider to be looking good. Like, why, why is it that in our society someone who wears a t-shirt and yoga pants is frowned upon? Why is that? You could say, oh, well, they look like they're apathetic or lazy or whatever. Um, this is something I've heard commonly in my life, that people who dress casual are somehow seen as not as capable. 
And I think this is some deeply rooted ableism um, when people say things like that. They don't even realize it's ableism because they don't have sensory issues and they can't possibly fathom the level of discomfort that autistic people face when we have to deal with these sensory issues. You know how I know that they can't fathom it? Because if they did, the entire manufacturing of clothing would be completely different. It would be completely different, and we would never have to deal with unwarranted comments like this. And so, I think part of it is that people really just don't understand how uncomfortable sensory issues really are. And manufacturers reflect this, uh, reflect the societal requirement for putting image above all else. So clothing is not designed to be comfortable, it's designed to look good, or it's designed to have look a certain way. Comfort is typically not the number one priority of clothing manufacturers, because they want to sell as many clothes as possible. And so what that means is they're going to, re they're going to pick the cheapest fabrics that they can, the cheapest, cheapest seams, everything, all of the above. They're going to make their product as cheaply as possible, which means typically you're going to get super uncomfortable itchy fabric and for neurotypicals it doesn't bother them at all because they have typical functioning of those parts of the brain like the orbital frontal cortex and such and so there's just a lot of misunderstandings behind it and I also want to point out that it wasn't until this year this year, my 26th year of living, that I, I crocheted myself a dress because I wanted to see if I could first off, but second, I wanted to make an outfit with absolutely no seams. Zero. Zero seams. So I picked this really nice yarn, I picked this really soft fabric that felt good, and I made it. I made a dress with no seams. And words cannot describe how it felt. I, like, euphoria is an understatement. It was straight up magic. And also, in kind of in a sad way, too. Because I realized how unbothered I was by what I was wearing. How comfortable I was wearing this. And I just couldn't help but think, is this how most people feel when they wear any clothes? Is, is this something that everyone gets to experience every day just from wearing whatever clothes they want to look good in. It blew my mind. I couldn't believe that I would have such a strong reaction to wearing clothing that wasn't immediately uncomfortable. And the problem is, autistic people get so used to denying our discomforts because everyone else around us doesn't see it. They don't experience life like that. And so they dismiss it. And then what happens is it triggers this internal dismission of all of our fundamental needs inside. And it's really not healthy at all. This is something I've been trying to strip away and change my habits about to be the best advocator I can for myself. Because if you don't advocate for yourself, who's going to advocate for you? That's what I'm saying. And so I'm trying to un unlearn all this stuff. You know, learning I'm autistic has also meant that I had a lot of false judgments about myself that had been internalized from things that people told me in my childhood, along with how women should look and all of these other things in our society, which are just expected, unfortunately. And so trying to trying to find clothing that feels good and, and fits or just doesn't feel deeply uncomfortable. Not only has it been a challenge, but it also leads to a lot of time spent and time wasted buying outfits. And then you get home and then it triggers you sensory-wise. You buy an outfit, it doesn't work. You're gifted an outfit, it doesn't work. It's like you have to, you basically have to try on 300 outfits just to find one that'll work. I've had, I've had this long sleeve shirt that is made of knitted cotton, and I've literally been wearing it since I was in middle school, and I can't bear to give it away even though, uh, or to get rid of it, because it's one of the few shirts that doesn't trigger me at all in the winter time. It doesn't have a collar neck, so that doesn't bother me at all, 
and it's this beautiful super soft orange fabric but it's getting older and I know that I'm going to need to replace it soon and I just really don't want to do that because I know in order to replace it I'm going to have to do more mental gymnastics to try to find the right fabrics that are going to work with my body and with my brain. It's not just as easy as does it look good or not. And so some of the consequences of wearing clothing that is very triggering to someone who has sensory issues means that if like suppose I wear skinny jeans and skinny jeans all day and a turtleneck uh, that's probably max level sensory issues if I really think about it. Maybe if we add high heels in there too that would be the absolute worst. So what are some of the consequences of trying to ignore these sensory issues and trying to wear clothing that is deeply uncomfortable? Well, to start, irritability, uh, lack of focus, lack of attention, because you can't think about anything else because it's so uncomfortable from having things touching your neck and having things pull in all the wrong places. You can't think about anything else. It's like this horrible negative feedback loop where you try to think about something else and then your brain just goes back to, oh, but this doesn't feel good. It's like trying to ignore the tack in your foot when you step on it. You can't. You can try to ignore it. You can say, you know, I know this isn't going to kill me. Let's just leave it in a little bit longer. But what happens is you can't focus. You can't communicate. And, and it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to exist in that state of discomfort. So, what is the solution? Well, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> My solution so far has, uh, recently, has been not buying clothing that doesn't feel perfect. So I've been extremely strict about which clothes I'm going to buy. Because if it has a seam that has even the slightest possibility of being uncomfortable like that, I just won't buy it. So this is one solution, but it's not a real solution because I still have to go through hundreds of hundreds of shirts, hundreds of pants, hundreds of shoes just to find something that feels good. And I feel like there's a market for this somewhere. Maybe someone could release an autistic clothing line for people with sensory issues or something like that. I know of a few websites that exist that do this, but most of them charge out the wazoo for a t-shirt. And so a few other solutions I've found that have helped a lot with this is sometimes I'll buy t-shirts and then I'll cut it. I'll cut off the sleeves. I'll cut v-necks in it so it doesn't feel like it's choking. And I have a sewing machine, so I'll sew my own clothes sometimes just to try to make them more comfortable or better fit and so forth. But this still doesn't solve the underlying problem of sensory issues and the real struggles that it entails to be an autistic person looking for clothing. So I hope that this episode helps you have a better understanding of what it's like for someone who's autistic to pick out clothing on a daily basis, go shopping to find clothing that feels good or doesn't feel terribly uncomfortable. And this is one of many struggles that autistic people face.